we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and transition to my face what is up everybody dan and dan the fireman here and we're gonna be talking about um some my own little personal things this isn't gonna be a coaching thing it's not gonna be like hey guys listen to me i know what i'm talking about no, this is uh, this is gonna be. I mean, I, I kind of do know what I'm talking about, but it's this is gonna be like a how to start and grow your YouTube channel, Dan Dan the Fireman's opinion. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, so I got the chat rolling up here, and uh, I just want to say thank you to my sponsors. Uh, if you guys are wondering who my sponsors are, well, it's all my patrons. We got 271 patrons now. That's amazing. Thank you for all the support. Um, if you would like to help support and then obviously get some perks while you're at it. Swing on by patreon.com slash Dan and the Farman. So thank you everybody for supporting and thank you to all the super chats and donations and channel memberships, everything, everything, everything. Thank you for being here. Um, I don't know who that is. That is a different thing. New follower. Oh, that's from Twitch. So that shouldn't be popping up very often. All right. So... We're going to be talking about uh, some of the things. The first things that I that I kind of have to tell you guys about when it comes to YouTube is uh, anything. Anything for content creation is, especially for YouTube, don't do it unless you want to do it. That's one of the biggest things is that I see a lot of people jumping into doing this stuff and they don't really want to do it in the first place. They just kind of do it because they want to either make some money or they want to... I don't know, just like, I I don't know what the reasons were, are for a lot of the things that people do, but I, I know one of the big things is people think it's like a, like the California gold rush here to get on YouTube and start making money. I mean, the, you start watching people on YouTube and you're like, man, I could do that. But you have to realize that they're, the reason why they got there is because they've been busting ass and getting, it takes a lot to get to that point just to, for even to, you to discover them. It takes a lot for that YouTuber themselves, that content creator, to actually get to that point. So for me personally, I'm at 81,487 subscribers at the moment of me saying this, but I've been do I've had a U this YouTube channel specifically since 2006, and I started taking it seriously around 2000 four years ago, 2015. I've been taking it seriously. Uh, so for four years straight, I've been building it up to the point where. Um, I can now do it full time. I've got 900 something videos on my channel. So, I mean, you have to want to do it. And it has to be a topic. And it has to be a niche of something that you'd like. Um, and for me personally, I mean, I like motorcycles. But, I mean, there's, there's, there's days where I don't like to ride motorcycles. There's days where it's not my favorite thing in the world. But what the, the main thing behind all that stuff is... What I love to do is bring you guys uh, specific values, bringing you guys uh, safety. Uh, that's my biggest thing is safety. So it's like how motorcycles is just my way of doing a lot of it. So, I mean, it kind of went from motorcycles to now it's just full on safety. So like I talk about men's mental health, I talk about motorcycle safety, all that stuff. So it all kind of goes into what, what it is I'm, I'm doing. So you really have to make videos that are closer to your passion of what you want to do. Um, so that's, you got to find out what you love to do. So if you like to knit, make a knitting channel. If you like to cook, make a cooking channel. You like to do this. You want to start making videos on the things that you like to do, because if you don't, then you're going to stop making videos right away. Um, and on top of that, if you start making videos and you start making content, like even, it doesn't even have to be videos. It could be just quick little pictures, you know, here and there on Instagram or anything like that. But mainly for YouTube, you know, it's videos. You can make short videos of the stuff that you like to do. So let's say you're cooking. I mean, you ever see those tasty uh, or those like those BuzzFeed type cooking things where it's just super quick. It's like two, three minutes and you learn a recipe. That is insane. That's crazy. And that's something that you could possibly do with your own little cooking channel. That's something you could do with uh, motorcycling and stuff. Um, and like I said, the reason why I got into it is because of the safety aspect. But I mean, who else here goes to YouTube uh, to learn something? I mean, I go to YouTube and I, I like to find stuff. Like I had to fix my AC unit and I needed to find a, a guy that knew what he was doing and, and kind of fit the example. And I went out searching and you could tell this guy liked what he did. And he was very smart about it. He wasn't just like, oh, here's today. I'm going to make a video. No, he was like super excited about it. And that kind of got me interested in it. And that's what I do. I, I look for videos that 
that uh, the person actually wants to make. So when they want to make it, they make good content. Um, so viewers will notice that. I notice that when I'm watching a YouTube video, if somebody actually wants to make the video or somebody's being told to make the video. So be aware that you don't want to come across as somebody that doesn't want to be there. Because if you don't want to be there, your viewer doesn't want to be there either. So definitely make sure you find something that you really, really, really want to do. Find a hobby that you love. Find something that you're knowledgeable about that you enjoy talking about. And that's where you need to start. All right, so now we need to actually start making the videos, okay? So if you don't have any videos whatsoever, you don't have a channel, you don't have any subscriptions, you don't have any viewers, okay? So really start making videos. Your first dozens of videos are going to suck. And then even now, like when I look at the videos I did last year, they I believe they suck compared to this year. So you're just always going to get better at it, always going to get better at it. And you really just need to start making videos. And then it's more of a trial and error type thing. Um, YouTube, and this is all a brand new space. It's about 10 years old, um, 10 to 15 years old. So it's brand new type of career thing. It's a brand new everything. So you're really experimenting and you kind of go with the flow, go with the trending topics. You kind of go with what you like and then uh, you make it exciting. So if it's not an exciting thing, to then make it exciting. Um, with that, you want to focus on a niche. And uh, once I get through some of these things, I really wanted to get through a lot of these things because I know you guys have questions in the in the chat. So hopefully some of the stuff that I say will answer some of them for you. Um, if not, after I get through some of these, I will answer some of your questions. So if you're listening to this on Spotify, uh, just remember I do this live. So make sure you check me out on YouTube. All right, so focus on that niche. So my niche when I first started was motorcycles. So YouTube in itself is just YouTube. So there's like a beauty section, you know, where people for beauty, there's a how-to, there's entertainment. Um, there, I mean, even beauty's in the how-to. So like how-to entertainment, that's basically the two main ones. And within the how-to, it's, you know, anything, like how to work on a bike, how to do your makeup, how to tie a tie, how to work on your truck, how to build a house. And then there's entertainment of, um, you look at entertainment, it's like, you know, just every, anything, like cartoons, like just random crap, you know. So you got those two sections, but then you have to dig deeper. So into the niche of, okay, now we're in the motorcycle niche. So there's the how-to and entertainment. Now there's, here's motorcycles. Okay, which direction do I want to go into? Do I want to do how-to type stuff, tutorials, um, information type stuff, or do I do want to do entertainment? Um, for me personally, uh, I went towards the how to and the tips and everything because I felt like, you know, I just, I had to, the reason why I started is because I wanted to help people not die. So I went towards that aspect. So I went towards the helping and, and how to stuff. Jake from State Farm became a YouTube member. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it, Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yourself a mustache, boy. Thank you for, be for supporting the channel once again. Jake's a patron. Now he's a member. Thank you very much. Um, so I focused on the how-to section, how to keep people safe. So I focused on, like, you know, what kind of gear you should get, all that stuff. So now I went from motorcycle how-to. That's Now it's, like, even a deeper niche, but it's still pretty big. Then I went down to how-to, and then it's, like, gear. Then I went to how-to uh, specifically Sportster. So I, the more you go specific, 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 the, the more diehard fans and subscribers you're going to start getting. Because if you try to go and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to be a motorcycle entertainer. How many do you know right now on YouTube that make you laugh while they're riding motorcycles? A lot. There's a lot of people out there. And those are the ones that are actually being seen. There's probably a hundred times, a thousand times more people trying to do the same thing. So if you're trying to be just a motorcycle entertainer it's not going to work so maybe be a harley davidson motorcycle entertainer well let's dig it deeper harley davidson sportster entertainer uh okay let's dig it even deeper harley sportster uh that does wheelies entertainer harley sportster that does canyon carving entertainer so like be known for something specific and then you can build upon that and then once you get the uh, the clout or the viewers and subscribers, then you can experiment into something a little bit more broader range. And that's kind of what I've been doing here with the, uh, the show and then, um, 
bunch of other stuff. I mean, I there's people that just go out and do demo rides and, and review bikes. That, that's another thing is you can do a – I just go out and review bikes. I'm known for reviewing bikes. Um, but for me personally, I, I did this. Hey, Mr. Reaper became – there it, there it is. Mr. Reaper became a YouTube member. If you started a trend, I have no problem with it, Jake from State Farm 94. I'd appreciate it. You guys, I see all these uh, YouTube members in the chat. I see a lot of green names in there. Thank you guys so much. Um, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, so really focus on like the, the, the smallest um, hardcore group of certain people, and then you can branch out a little bit more. So really find that niche. Don't try to grab all the eyeballs at once. It's not going to work because you're not you're going to try to please too many people. And honestly, nobody cares. They have their own specific person that they like. Um, you really want to find uh, the people that are actually looking for specific things. So, like, if somebody's looking for how do you, like, Sportster wheelies, like, that's weird. I want to look that up. And then somebody finds you because you're one of, like, ten that do it. It's a lot easier than trying to be, like, the one out of uh, 100,000 that do something. You know what I mean? So, it's one subscriber is really important. Two subscribers just as important. I mean, once you get to the point where I'm at right now, every subscriber still is very important. It, it, at no point am I like, man, it's, it's, it's stupid. You know, it's like, oh, I only got 200 today. It's like, no, it's like pff, amazing. So every subscriber is important because each one will help you, you know, build your audience. Um, but at the end of the day, the numbers aren't really the biggest thing. So uh, my tip number four out of five, I'm going to go over five today. And then uh, we're going to open it up to the chat. And I just want to hang out with you guys. Uh, is it don't focus on the numbers? So like right here, I, I mean, I do have the the uh, counter here. Um, I'm not focused on the numbers. I used to be, and I think everybody is because it's really cool to see. But uh, the one thing that's really helped me out, the one thing that's really pushed my content to the next level, is uh, really focusing on the content. Uh, it's pushed my channel really far. So really focus on making good content and then when you think you're actually doing a good job you're like man i love this thing i love this this video i just made it's it's awesome it's badass then don't just stick with it i mean if it works it works but then build upon it you know throw away the stuff that doesn't work and then keep the stuff that does and for a long time um i've seen some youtubers that just do the same thing over and 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 over again and that's fine if it works for them, but I can tell you, I bet you they're bored because I get bored. Um, and I don't change things just for the sake of changing things. Um, I try not to, at least anyways. Uh, what I do is I, I find, let's say, 90% of this worked, like this video. 90% of this video worked. I think this 10% of stuff uh, possibly had people leave the view or leave the video or they unsubscribed or they just didn't like it. Okay, so this 10% didn't work. So I'll grab that 10% and throw it out. And I'll keep the 90%. I'll try another, I'll try a different thing now. And I'll just keep, you know, like evolving, evolving, evolving to where now the videos come out to where they are. And uh, it, that's how it really works. It really works that way. And that's kind of what you need to focus on. Don't focus on the numbers. Don't be like, okay, well, this really worked. So, uh, I mean, I, I got like 20 subscribers on that video. So I'm going to keep doing that. No, because, you know, who knows? Maybe those subscribers watched a bunch of other videos of yours and they subscribed, just so happened, just click subscribe that day. Um, so really kind of go off of the feedback you get in the comments. Uh, that's why when somebody says something to me, I, I say, okay, well, I'm not angry. I want to kind of know what you mean by that so I can, you know, either improve. And then on top of that, I want to make sure that I actually like the stuff I am making myself. Like, would I watch this myself? And if it's a no, then it's, it needs to be better. So when I edit, I literally watch my own video four to ten times. Like, it depends. That's a big range, four to ten times. But I do watch my own video many times before. And I'm constantly doing rough draft, rough draft, rough draft, rough draft. And then I finally come up with a final draft. And even sometimes... I'm like, ah, I don't like it. So then I take it down off of YouTube before it goes public, and then I redo it. So I really care about the content itself. I want to make sure you guys are getting enough value out of it. And uh, that's my driving force. It's not like, is this going to get more views? No, it's, it's, I, is this going to, like I did the video on, uh, what was it just recently? I did a, uh, where, where is it at? Where is it at? I did the uh, five reasons not to ride a motorcycle. It's probably my least performing video in the last 20 videos. 
but I still feel like it's important for everybody to know because I did a I did a uh, I think it was seven reasons to ride a motorcycle and it's like we're all here because we love riding motorcycles where we want to start but I don't think on a motorcycle channel nobody wants to see five reasons not to ride in terms of like well I don't want to see that I just want to see positive stuff well I still have to explain to you the negatives of riding a motorcycle because at the end of the day you need the full picture um, I knew that video itself wasn't going to do that well, but I still felt like you needed it. Um, the one re and then that's another reason why I put out a video today is because I know I put a video out that you guys probably don't want to see the truth about. So I gave you a little extra, you know what I mean? And, uh, that video was a video that I think everybody would like, and it's the biggest dangers to motorcyclists. And honestly, it's the, it's the, it's doing really well. It's probably the top, I think it's the second best video in the last 10 videos, um, so it's doing pretty well and those are the types of videos people are looking out for and uh, I got a lot of good feedback on that one because I, I did a patreon poll and that's what you guys said you wanted to see so I know I just said don't focus on numbers but it's a huge thing and the main thing is I want to make sure I'm teaching you guys something I want to make you guys laugh while you're learning um, and then what is it that I'm trying to do for you so once again how to or entertain the best, if you can do both, that's great. If you can do one, that's that's still good. If you can't do either or, then don't make a video. Because nobody just wants to see you just talk while you're riding. Honestly, nobody does. Nobody wants to just see you while you're riding and hear the wind. I mean, they they're, you're, you're competing for eyeballs. And then on top of that, it's their time. You don't want to waste people's time. Um, so once you do that, evaluate your process every few months. So if you find what works, stick with it for a little bit. And then change it up every two to three months um, just a little bit uh, don't change a whole bunch um, but that way you find out what works and what doesn't and then that way you can experiment and become a better content creator it's not just motive vlog it's not just you know cooking and all that stuff it's just so you can be a, a better content creator and like I said don't be afraid to experiment um, I would start off uh, if you're wondering, like, okay, well, that's all good information. It's like, uh, well, now what do I do? It's like, well, I'd start off with one video a week. So try your best to do one video a week. And um, that's probably, like, the minimum you're going to want to do. Uh, two videos a month is pushing it. One video a month is really pushing it. Because, I mean, if you're just now starting off and you're only doing a video a month, that one video has to be really good and it's gonna have to be shared really like a lot for it to get any traction so the more videos you put out at the beginning the better um, but you start getting into uh, quality versus quantity type thing and you definitely don't want to put out five videos a week that are crap um, I'd rather spend that amount of time on one video for that one week so start off with one video a week uh, get used to that schedule uh, spend a couple days coming up with video topics. So I personally come up with probably five to six video topics um, every week. Just ideas. And then I kind of work on the ones that I think will do well. And then I make three videos a week. So, I mean, three video topics is one week worth of topics. Then I got to go film it. So I'll spend about, like I said, a couple days coming up with video topics. And I'll, I'll spend probably a day or two more coming up with the bullet points um, that's why I'm on the bike and I have my phone there because I have just bullet points and since I spent so much time reading and reading and reading and reading and figuring things out it kind of comes out to me I just need bullet points at that point um, and then I'll film it I'll film I'll film about three to five videos uh, oh, I just hit the camera three to five videos uh, in one session and if each each video is about 15 minutes long you know without editing so it's the main thing so I mean that's that's like close to was that? that's an hour two hours of filming just constantly writing hour two hours of me talking and then that's called batch producing so I'll just film all those videos I'll come home and I'll import it all into the computer and then I'll do whatever it is I need to do especially with the 360 camera I got to stitch all the stuff and render it all um, and then I'll spend about a week or two f editing so like I'll go riding an hour or two to go f as filming as I need and then I don't get back on the bike I spend most of my time editing so that's one thing that you're going to have to really work at is that you're going to have to start figuring out how to edit. And the better you get, um, the quicker you get. So for me, I spend at least two hours on a video. Now, when I first started editing, I still spent two hours on that video. I spent two hours on that video, but 
my videos weren't that great and they weren't edited very well it was just two hours of me trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing so I still maintain that two hours but I can get a lot more done in two hours so that way I can add more stuff in my two hours just because I'm getting better at what I do um, doesn't mean I can cut the time in, of editing down to like 20 minutes and call it a day that means I didn't spend enough time so I spend at least two hours uh, at least on the video uh, for every video and then uh, you gotta work on that thumbnail like I said I, I do the rough drafts and I watch it like four or five times still still work through it but you gotta work on that thumbnail too if, if your thumbnail is not good if it's not high def if it's not up to, to what it should be and it's not clickable guess what no one's gonna click it um, if nobody clicks your video nobody watches it so you definitely want to get something that people will will want to to take a look at you know it's like oh I like that let's see what this is all about and they click it now you don't want to be clickbaity you do not want to put something in your thumbnail that's not what's in the video and uh, same thing with the title you don't want to put something in the title that's not in the video um, one thing that really does help out with with thumbnails is your face it doesn't have to be your face but I mean like it could be a face it could be a helmet or something but definitely something that people are drawn to is other people's faces you know when you talk to somebody you look at each other you don't look at the ground or whatever hopefully you don't uh, so those are things that you need to really work on when it comes to that so definitely work on your thumbnail and obviously your video and this whole time I, I kind of mentioned is not to really worry about the numbers it's content is king okay content is the main thing if you don't have good stuff it doesn't matter how many subscribers you have you're not gonna get the views I mean there's a people out there with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of subscribers there's people out there with millions of subscribers and I'm getting more views than them because they're not making good content anymore they obviously made good content to get to that number but they don't make good content anymore they're stagnant they're stale nobody cares anymore so in order for you to keep growing is that you need to do that um, so th those are five tips uh, that I have I have a little bit more there's there is another video that I made it's a uh, how to grow your channel it's an actual video I think I made it two years ago and it still holds true it still holds true and uh, now I'm gonna open it up to you guys in the in the chat so I want to hear you guys questions when it comes to um, YouTube it comes to motorcycles it comes to anything that's the DDFM show the channel itself I just want to let you guys know that um, I'll be at Indian Motorcycle Tucson tomorrow from 9 a.m. to noon to demo ride some of their bikes. Um, and I think they're going to have an FTR there just as a – you don't demo it. It's just going to be there. So just like last time. So I can't wait to see what the bike looks like again. Maybe see if they did any changes to it because uh, that's the bike that I want to get. I really, 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 really want to get it. So it would be awesome to get. Um, but yeah, uh, I just want to say thank you to my supporters. Thank you to everybody that supports the show. Uh, if you listen to this on Spotify, thank you. Um, but I'd like to say thank you to my 271 patrons as of today, as of right now, on patreon.com slash Dan of the Fireman. Thank you so much for the support. You guys make this possible. And same thing for all those YouTube members, Mr. Reaper, Jake from State Farm 94, the new ones today. Thank you, guys. All right, so now I'm going to start uh, answering some of you guys' questions. Some of your questions. All right, let's see. Um, let's see. I'm a new rider, still took MSF course. So this is from the Bearded Josh. Hey, man, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, anyone in the future want to do a ride? I'll do a ride with you, man. I'll do a ride with you. Uh, do, 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 do. Mr. Reaper, yeah, clickbait misleading titles are the worst. Yeah, because they'll get you. And here's the thing is that... Is, is the clickbait misleading tile, titles, they suck because they waste your time. You're like, dang it, I clicked this video because I wanted to see this. It's like, okay, as the content creator yourself, let's say you created that clickbait title and then you got somebody to click the, click the, the thumbnail, they're going to leave. And then they're going to know that, like, this guy's stupid. He freaking said this was going to happen and this didn't happen. So I'm not going to subscribe to him. I'm not going to watch any more of his videos. So in the end, it's a self-correcting problem. Um, so the reason why I say don't make those clickbait misleading tiles for one is because it's not a good way to, to keep people and two it's against the community guidelines too so you can actually get in trouble with YouTube themselves um, Brian oh wait uh, did it, it, it yeah Brian price your videos let's see let's see where is your videos are helpful and helps new people to understand the do's and don'ts thanks man 
I try. Oh, Nicholas Dubois with another, with another 499 donation. Thank you so much. Uh, 1010 Best Motorcycle Channel on YouTube. I appreciate it. You are the most recent super chat, and you are actually the top, the monthly top super chat. You notice how it moved up. So Nicholas, it went from 499 for the month from you to 998. So thank you for ten dollars so far this month. I appreciate it, man. A lot of help. That does help out the channel, and that is a great way to support the channel also, and what we do here. Uh, uh, let's see. How do you make thumbnails? What are you using for video editing? So Tango Forty Seven. Um, I use uh, Photoshop. So I personally use Photoshop just because I've been using Photoshop for a long time. But there is a bunch of uh, free software out there. I believe Adobe Spark. I believe that's free to everybody. Um, so that's an that's a great way to uh, start. And they have some good um, templates. Uh, basically, the main thing you want to do is if you're going to do anything, try to keep it less busy as possible. So when I, so if you noticed on my recent thumbnails for the past month or two, I've made it like super simple, where it's either one thing, and it has some text. That's it. I used to make it to where it was like a picture of a bike and a bunch of people and all that stuff. And like if you look at it on a phone, you can't tell what the hell's going on. But if you make it super simple, so it's just like one thing and text that's it then you should be good so uh, I definitely recommend doing that so Adobe Spark and then there's there's a bunch of uh, YouTube thumbnail cr uh, creation tools online um, but at the end of the day you could really get away with just taking a picture of your face and then uh, you can you can put some text on it with it like an online editor or your phone editor uh, but definitely make it landscape you don't want to make it vertical because it's gonna cut it all off and everything let's see uh, Phoenix office 67th and lower Buckeye area. Oh yeah. Oh, that's where you are bearded Josh. Yeah. You gave me the confidence to go for it. Bottom line. Thank you. Dell's catering. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the kind words. That makes me, uh, makes me happy. It keeps me doing what I'm doing. Just those kind words guys is, is, is that right there. It's well worth it. It's well worth it. But at the same time, this is my full-time job now. So uh, this is my full-time job. So thank you, uh, Nicholas, and all the supporters, and everybody that watches my videos. Because the more people that watch my videos, obviously, the more AdSense revenue comes in. It's not the best. It's honestly very inconsistent. And that's something I wanted to talk to you guys about. But I think we could talk about that um, in another show. Maybe do a part two of this where we kind of talk about how to actually make money on YouTube. Uh, for the main thing is that if you start and grow your YouTube channel, the money will come later. It finally got to the point where I can afford doing this. And here's the thing, guys. Like I said, I've been taking it seriously for four years. Four years. And it's just now enough. Just barely. Okay? So just don't get into it thinking you're going to be like a millionaire. You're not. I mean, those top guys that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars, they've been at it for a long time. Or they, I don't know. I don't know how they did it. <laughs> they have a different type of niche. Entertainment is very big. Um, the niche that I'm in is very small, tight knit, and I'd rather have it that way anyways. Uh, my pride is more sore than anything. Yeah. Sorry to hear that, Jake. I saw that, uh, post on the Patreon. Yeah. So don't tire shine, bro. I should have, I should have told every, I should have mentioned that. Um, it sounds to me like you're explaining it basically the way I describe writing music. My problem is I'm very critical of myself. I've written multiple songs and just tossed them. Dude, there's been times where I go out riding and I just toss the footage. Like I filmed uh, two insurance uh, videos and I tossed the first one. So I'm making an insurance video. Uh, it's going to be up by the end of the month. And I'm really focusing on that. Alenka, thank you. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. You're welcome for all the information. I appreciate the super chat. I appreciate the, the donation. It really does help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like... And then there's like topics that I come up with that I'm like, ah, eh, it's not going to work. Or it's like, you know, I could make the video and I could get like, you know, a couple thousand views on this video. But it's like, eh, is it really, is it like, do, do people really want to see that? And that's another reason why I do a lot of polls and a lot of, and I ask you guys a lot of questions. Um, I'm actually thinking about transferring to my Phoenix terminal and move out there. So we might be able to set something up. Yeah, yeah boy. I think you're talking to uh, Bearded Josh, but I mean, if you're up in Phoenix, I can pro possibly go up there. Uh, more mods and moto camping videos. That was what got me hooked. Yeah, I definitely want to. Here's the thing is that my bike, I'm pretty much done with my bike. There's not much I could do to my bike other than 
changing the exhaust and changing the handlebars out to a different set but it's like i'm not the type of guy that that goes out and buys stuff just so i can have an extra video series that's more work <laughs> and i'm spending money so it's like i'd rather spend that money so all the all the money i get from patreon and adsense and stuff i pay i pay the bills and then um i save it so that i can invest it into something that will actually pay dividends as in I want to get a truck and trailer so that I can travel the country. That's the whole point of the 500 patrons is I want to travel the country and come teach you guys. I invested the, the um, some Patreon money, I invested the AdSense money, and my own personal money in uh, becoming an MSF rider coach. So I figured, you know, what's more important, becoming an MSF rider coach, spending the eight nine hundred dollars on that, or buying an exhaust and a new seat? You know what I mean? So I got a ton of information uh, from becoming an MSF Rider Coach and all those things. Um, so the mods thing, that's hard to do. But here's the thing is that if I get the FTR 1200, I'll be doing a whole new series on that. Thank you, Brian Price. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most recent super chat, Brian Price. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. That's awesome. You guys are, you guys are amazing. Thank you, guys. It helps out a lot. Um, but yeah, if I get the FTR 1200, I'm going to be doing a whole mod series on that, man. But it's going to be all Indian stuff. I mean, it's an Indian FTR 1200. The moto camping, we actually have a... a I'm going to be camping tomorrow. So um, the whole point of the camp out tomorrow and this weekend is with the whole DDFM crew that's coming down. And uh, and then there's the local crew that we're going to go camping. It's going to be cold as heck. But I'm going to ride up there. My wife's going to be up there. She's going to drive the car. And we're going to kind of set things up and just have a good time. And... The whole point, though, is for me to relax, so I, I might not make videos, but who knows? Who knows? I might make some videos. Um, it's starting to warm up a little bit more, so moto camping will be on the ticket. Uh, I might do that again now that I'm in a good spot. And it, I, that was one of the biggest things that you're, you're not the only one, Steve. There's a lot of people that joined up on this channel to see that stuff last year. And I was, I was doing it, I was doing it, I was doing it, and then it just kind of died. It was one of those things that I experimented with, but it was one of those things that worked that I had to cut off, though. So, once again, um, how to grow in your channel, that's one of those things that I, I need to focus on. So, yeah. Thanks, man. I like talking to you. Um, what's up, D-Gun? Anyone else get motion sickness watching the shaky helmet cam? The 360 handlebar cam is stable and seems fine. Yeah, that's why I uh, I keep it on. Like when I film, I make sure I use the 360 camera. Uh, it's right here. It's the Insta 360 One X. I'm actually just I just finished charging it. So it's this camera right here, and it has a it's a stable. It has a really good stabilization, and I try my best to uh, put my face on this. Like when I make the videos, I try to use this camera more so than my the front facing, because it is more stable. And I also get motion sickness sometimes too. So. I like it. It was well worth it. It takes a lot longer to edit something like this with the 360. I gotta, I got to render it all before I can even put it in Premiere Pro. There's a bunch. There's a bigger headache involved, but it increases the production value, and I have the time now to increase the the production value because you guys allow me to do this full time with all your donation donations and watching my videos. I don't know why I had an accent there. All right, uh, Tasha, uh, we need more women video creators for beginner riders. I just watched a video of Nikki practicing during her lunch hour. So ins inspirational. Watching her improve her skills helps me so much. I'll let her know, Tasha. That's Those are some kind words, and she loves hearing stuff like that. Once she gets back into riding, um, remember, here's the thing. is like I want her to get back into riding, but there's only so much you can really push somebody. Because if I push her, it's like, come on, get back into riding. I want to make some videos. That is not loving. That is like not. That's not what I'm supposed to if she wants to get back into it, she wants she can get back into it. Um, but I would love to see her back into riding. <laughs> At least, you know, back on my bike, right? Um, but, yeah, I would love to. And then uh, speaking of coaching and teaching, I'll be coaching out at Ride Arizona MTC May 4th and May 5th for the BRC1. We have three DDFM crew members signed up. Um, I was told by my boss. I was told by Trina. Uh, she told me, hey, uh, uh, we got three of your guys, three of your peoples uh, signed up. So thank you guys for signing up. Thank you for letting, uh, thank you for typing it in saying, hey, I signed up because Dana and the fireman or I want Dan and the fireman to coach. Well, guess what? I'll be coaching May 4th and 5th out here in Tucson. And so far we got those three at least. So the more people, the better. I think we can have, 
I'm not gonna have, I, we can have a lot um, until it fills up. So the more people we have, the better though, because then we'll have two coaches and we'll still have a really good like one to five, one to six student ratio. So it's really good. Uh, D Gun just bought your first bike, Harley 48. Hey Bob, how you doing, man? The pink beard, yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're welcome, D Gun, for all the info. Mini, uh, meet up, mini ride, and go somewhere for grub. Oh man, I would love to. I'm hungry. Thank you, Link. I appreciate. It. I really do. Get a new bike and start over. Yeah, that's so. See, yeah, see, I'm like, I'm, I'm catching up to guys. Your guys' comments. The FTR 1200 is coming out. I really want to. I'm gonna sell my. I'm actually selling my car. Um, now that I can work from home, so I don't really need a car other than to pick up the kids. But I, I'm selling the car, so hopefully I can get uh, a truck. Like I said, and then hopefully a trailer. That way I can put my bike in and travel you, with you guys. So I'm actually, I mean, I'm investing into the channel, guys. I'm, I'm investing every single cent you guys donate and support with on Patreon. And uh, I'm, I'm investing it back in so I can I can give you guys what you what you want. That's, that's what I'm here for. Martha Quam, boy, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need to create new ones. That was uh, the Ultimate Warrior. I need to create my own. <laughs> I got a green screen and everything. I needed to go do that. Um, so I, yeah, I definitely want to get the FTR though. I mean, that's that's on the list too. So I, I'm trying to make it to where I don't have any payments on anything. You know what I mean? That way I can save that money up, and then I can go get another bike, and then I can do a whole new series on that. And then uh, also on top of that, I'm selling my bike. So my bike uh, for for my subscribers, the crew, it's five grand firm. So my sports are Harley Sports are 1200 with all that stuff, the exhaust, the saddlebags, everything that it comes with, the the fuel pack, all those things, five grand, um, pretty much brand new tires, uh, yeah, for the subscribers, and I'm gonna put it up on Auto Trader and Craigslist and all that for seven thousand OBO. So if you're down here in Tucson or if you want to come down and pick it up, five grand, it's yours. That way I can go buy the FTR and we can start something new, and you're gonna have a a pretty good bike, you know. For that price. Uh, so, anyways, uh, Dan, why not do a big board kit from SNS? Eh, I'd rather spend the money on an FTR. You know what I mean? I would love to have an FTR. Yeah, yeah, I like, I love seeing the cool dog and then the DDFM another and then America. Thanks for the super chat, Brian and everybody. I've been riding a while now, but I never took an MSF course. Thinking about taking one once I get out of Phoenix. Uh, they, we do them in Phoenix also. Uh, we do them in Phoenix also. Uh, let's see. What mic do you use in your helmet? I bought an external mic for my GoPro, but it sounds terrible. So what I have, um, it's the Sony ECM CS3. It's in my helmet in the, in the closet. The Sony ECM CS3, and I created my own little little dead dead cat. That's what this little fuzzy thing is. I created my own, um, but you can buy them on Amazon also. And then I have it plugged in. Here's the thing: is I have I I went and did extra. I have it plugged in to my task cam, so the audio that you hear it doesn't go to my my D4K, which is this. It doesn't go into this, okay? And I also have my older uh, GoPro Hero 4 Black. I used to put the audio straight into that. No, not anymore. Um, I don't do that anymore. I, I've been using the task cam. Well worth it. It's 100 bucks. Um, you can buy... You can buy the GoPro, or not GoPro, you can buy the Yi 4K for like 120 bucks. This is 100 bucks. It's still cheaper than the newest GoPro, and that's what I do. And that way I get, if I if if I just want to film the stuff on my handlebars, I don't have to have a mic going to the, the 360 camera or anything like that. I It's so much better, and the audio quality is better. GoPros aren't designed for that, okay? So GoPros aren't designed for good audio. They really aren't. So get something to increase your audio. And that's another thing. Cold combos. Yeah, yeah, boy. Thank you, man. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Um, good audio is very important when it comes to YouTube videos. Everyone thinks vi you need to have good video. No, no. If it's if you sound like crap, you're not. no one's going to watch. Um, let's see. Where are you coming from? Oh, Beardy Josh. You guys are all having a chit-chat. Once again, guys, uh, we have the Discord. So if you want to hang out in the Discord, that's really cool. Uh, it's a great place to meet others. Uh, do you ever ride with music? It seems to help me focus and stay alert. It just shuts off the part of my brain that overthinks. Uh, yeah, I do. I ride with music all the time when I am not filming. And when I ride, I'm always filming. So um, it's very rare that I actually 
go out and ride just to ride and I need to start doing that more. But when I did, it, I would always listen to music. Uh, when I'm filming, I don't listen to music. So I need to stay focused on what I'm talking about. Um, and then on top of that, uh, everyone says don't do it cause it's not safe. But here's the thing. If you're keeping your head on a swivel and you're 100% focused on safety, but you just have that background noise of music, um, that's good. Just don't get so trapped into the music that you're not paying attention to what you're doing. That's that's kind of where I'm at on that one. Yeah, Tasha, come on out, come on out. Um, and you can also you can also take the BRC two class. Uh, that's one day, so it might be a little bit easier because the BRC one is two day. But that'd be awesome. Um, I have a uh, the DDFM crew manual. Tasha, you're yeah, you're a patron. Um, Double check the uh, the the crew manual at the website. You get access to it. It's for one dollar. Um, you get access to it, so I mean you you should have access to it, and that will get you prepared for a BRC class. Um, but nothing can really substitute taking a BRC class. So definitely take a BRC class. So I have the uh, the Discord open right here. So every time you guys do a super chat, it posts that you that you did a super chat in the Discord. So everybody on Discord, the 900 members, I think there's 900 members, everybody knows that you posted that or you made a, a donation. You had 918 members in the Discord. It's crazy. So if you're not a part of the Discord, make sure you join the Discord. That's absolutely free. Um, I'll post a link in the, the chat right now. So if you want, you can go ahead and click it and then come back. Um, let's see. Hey, Matt's here. Moto's with Matt, but... Uh, Mr. Reaper, it's it's only 5k because I just want to sell it to my my subscribers for for cheap. You know, 5k is pretty good price. Um, yeah, so I mean it's well maintained. I, other than the fact that I took it off road for a good year. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. Let me catch up. Uh, I got my first bike, so Alechko Alek Kosovich Crow. I got my first motorcycle, 2005 Honda Shadow Arrow, and your videos have helped me out a whole lot. Thanks a whole lot. You're welcome. The The Honda Shadow is a badass bike. I'm glad you're having fun. What's up, Megan? Uh, what's up, bruh? Uh, how do I get the tire shine off my tires? I would never put that crap on there. Um, maybe a little bit of sandpaper. Um, definitely don't want to do any crazy solvents on your on your tires. Uh, po probably just dish, deter dish soap, scrub it, and then make sure you wash it clean and dry it. Um, a good scrub would remove your tire shine. Yeah, never use tire shine on your motorcycle tires. Um, I did that once, and thankfully I never crashed, but I got made fun of for that. Uh, what do you recommend? Oh, there you go. Uh, what's your favorite motorcycle? Ike S right now. It's the Indian FTR 1200S. Um, Matt. Motors with Matt. I'm going to see him tomorrow, so hopefully it's going to be there. He said it's going to be there, so I'm upset if it's not. Um... But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go check it out. I'm going to get some good pictures of it. Uh, let's see. How often do you do live chats? So, so Lenka, I do them Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Um, you usually have a topic. So today's topic was uh, tips on how to start and grow your YouTube channel. Um, after I, I complete the topic, I open it up to an open chat. We just kind of hang out, answer your questions. And then uh, this actually goes up on Spotify usually the next day. So if you have Spotify, you can definitely check out Spotify. Oh, man. Thank you, Cold Combos. Ice Cold Combos for the $15 Super Chat. I appreciate that, man. You just became the monthly top Super Chatter and the most recent Super Chatter. So thank you, the monthly top Super Chatter. Thank you so much. We got a new one. Nicholas Dubois got dethroned. Uh, no, I you got the Rebel 500. Let me. I, I missed what you said. You said that uh, you just got the Rebel 500. It's a badass bike, dude. I love the Rebel 500. I have so much fun riding it. It's almost like you know you go on uh, like a little kid. It, it's not a little kid kid bike, but when I go from a 1200 Sportster with basically a Stage One kit in it, I and then I go to the Honda Rebel 500, which is base. It's stock. It 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 feels like I'm. I'm going on to something that's just like playful and I have so much fun so much fun so much fun I love it absolutely love it all right so let's let me scroll back up sorry about that thank you well not sorry thank you so much for the super chat man it's, I appreciate it is it easy to sync the sound up with the video when you get to edit it yes um, there's um, Premiere Pro you can merge clips so what I do when I first start my videos 
and I used to show you guys, but now I just cut it all out, is that I'll start the 360 camera, I'll start my E 4K, I'll start the task cam, and then I'll do a clap. You ever see those people in movies, how they do like, all right, take one. That, that right there is for people in post-production to sync up that spike in audio from the cameras and, the, and then the mics. So then once it's synced up, it can go. But in Premiere Pro, there's a thing called merging, uh, merging the clips. It's very simple. And the, uh, it automatically does it. And so I have all my audio replaced with the Tascam audio. So it's super quick and super easy. It doesn't take much at all. Um, just make sure you clap. And there's been a few times where I didn't clap and it still worked. So it's it's pretty easy. You're, you're back. Megan, how you doing? Hey, man, is your wife still riding the Rebel Ice Cold Combos? Uh, Not recently. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I need to catch up, guys. Uh, not recently, but she's going to get back into it. Um, we moved a little bit further away from her work, so it's a little bit harder for her to get home in time when there's still enough sunlight. Uh, the Rebel is 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 not my main ride. Um, my my uh, my Sportster is my main ride right now. But I mean, I, I go back and forth, back and forth. So I mean, it's just it's just fun. I think they're both like equally as fun to me. Um, but I definitely want to sell the uh, the Sportster. So then, yeah, the Rebel will be my main ride until I get the FTR. So if anybody wants to buy it, five grand, five grand out the door, you can have it. Um, I don't need to sell it. I mean, it's paid off. So, I mean, I still want to get the FTR, but here's the thing is I don't want three bikes. I just, I'll never ride the Sportster if I get the FTR. So five grand, you can have it. Uh, what's that audio tracker for the red thing? So this right here, this, this basically just records the audio. This has, this is designed to record good audio. That's why my voice comes over the, the wind and it comes over all the, the things and doesn't sound muffled. It sounds like an actual, uh, thing. Uh, or, oh, and if you're talking about this, this is a, this is a dead cat. So. This is the actual mic, and it probably sounds a little weird. You can hear the wind. So if you're listening to this later, it's because I pulled the dead cat off. So this right here diffuses all the wind noise. Um, so you definitely want to get something like this when you go riding and you have it inside your helmet. But I put it on here because it came with it, so and it sounds better with it. Finally got my bike past 100 mile break in. It feels totally different right now. Nice, Ian. Congrats, man. Jake from State Farm, no worries, man. We all make those mistakes. We all make those mistakes, Jake. I'm a Brazilian in Tucson, and I'm going to start Motovlog here. You inspire me. Thanks, man. Crow, Arizona, awesome, man. Come on down to Indian Motorcycle Tucson uh, tomorrow and Saturday. I'll be there tomorrow. Um, test ride some bikes, man. Test ride some bikes. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, do you have a link for that camera and the recording thing? If you don't want to post it here, would you s be able to send it to me on Messenger? Yeah, um, I have it all here. So I have, let's see, my favorite gear. So I have all my gear that I that I recommend on this website. Um, that's it's a little it's a list that I created on Amazon because I get almost all my stuff from Amazon. So it's a list I created on Amazon. Um, so there you go. <laughs> it makes it easier. I used to post every little thing. Now I just put it all on a list and be like, here, check out the link. Um, nobody ever told me I didn't know it would make things so slick. Yeah, it's that's the crazy thing is that you do it for car tires, but just remember you never really lean on car tires. So it's not, yeah. Don't worry about it, man. As long as you're okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh... Do you think it's safe to use those glues like Suguru to fix your GoPro on your helmet? Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's, yeah. Mine's, mine's been on there since like a year and a half ago and it's still holding strong. Uh, Suguru is awesome. Uh, I, I highly recommend Suguru. Don't use like an epoxy. I wouldn't use an epoxy or anything that's semi-permanent on your helmet because it could, it could damage your helmet itself if you ever want to take it off. Um, so yeah, don't do that. Um... Everyone smash that like button. Yeah, yeah, boy. Uh, Dan, do you know Astrid? No, I don't. No, I don't. Do a giveaway, giveaway with the bike? Hey, yeah, you know, if uh, I'll sell 5,000 tickets for a dollar each. How about that? <laughs> I'll do a raffle. Uh, so you have the external mic hooked up to the tracker, and then you match the audio to the video. Yes, yes. So I hook up my mic to this. 
I don't care about the – I don't hook it up to my GoPro. I don't hook up the mic to anything else other than this, and then I sync it up afterwards. Um, how do I find the demo days in my area? Is there a website or something that posts the event? So usually the dealership will post the event. Um, so definitely here's what I would do is that if you have Facebook, follow the dealership on your Facebook and then follow the events that they post. Um, dealerships really like to do that, especially Harley and Indian. Um, so that's how I find out about demo days is because of Indian posts them. And then on top of that, Matt gives me a heads up sometimes um, because he works there. So uh, definitely follow them. Uh, so XD Monkey, just curious why the FTR. FTR. So I've been, I've been wanting the FTR 1200. Basically, the FTR flat tracker since I heard about it. And I, I made a video, I think, two years ago on the FTR uh, 750 that was the flat tracker that they came out with for racing. And I was like, man, I really want this bike. I really, really, really want this bike. It looks like a badass bike. I want it. I want it. I want it. And this was back when I was taking my Sportster off-road. So I was kind of already doing that. I was doing a lot of scrambler type stuff. It wasn't flat track, but I was doing a lot of scrambler stuff. And... That just, it was like a purpose built bike. And I was like, I want it. I want it. And then uh, they came out with the prototype, the FTR 1200 prototype, which wasn't, it's not what's coming out. It's not the production model. And I was like, I want that. And then the FTR production model came out. I was like, I still want it. So I, I want it mainly because I, for, for one thing, I've had my bike for a long time and I want something new. And I've always wanted an Indian, but I didn't want a scout because it's like, why would I go from a sportster to a scout? I want something different. I like dual sports and I like adventure bikes and I like trackers and scrambler type bikes. And this just seems to like hit all those marks. It's got cruise control. It's got anti-slip, anti-wheelie, or it's got like all these tech, all this technology, gyroscopes. It's got a, it's, it's, it's raised up. The clearance is very good. So I can go off road. Uh, suspension's amazing. Everything is just designed to what I want it to be. And then on top of that, everything is pretty much bolt on, on that bike. So I can, you, you know there's going to be third-party stuff for it. You know there's going to be third-party stuff. So that's 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 kind of why. I'm in southeast uh, Wisconsin. Oh, scroll up if that helps. Oh, uh, no, yeah, just find find uh, your find your dealership on Facebook or on their website and go to their events tab if you can. Any thoughts on the Game of Thrones final season? I'm sad it's the final season, but I can't wait. Um, no spoilers. Guys, I'll be up camping this weekend, so I won't be able to see the first episode. But I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I already got tickets for um, Avengers Endgame, too. I've already got tickets like two weeks ago for it. So we're going to go see that. Yeah, yeah boy. Uh, Jose Rodriguez. What's up, Dan? Love the channel. New rider here. Been riding a 2009 Honda Rebel 250. What's a good upgrade after that? If you like the the Rebel, if you like the way it is, I, go to the Rebel 500. Um, Indian Scout 60 would be a great upgrade for that, though. Uh, Indian Scout 60, uh, five speed, very good power, still very friendly to new riders, low seat height, just like the Honda Rebel, um, but bigger in terms of more power, just like a, obviously like a longer bike, a little bit bigger bike, heavier bike, but not by much. Um, and so definitely check out uh, Indian Scout, uh, Indian Scout 60, or the Indian Scout Bobber. And that, honestly, if you get an Indian Scout, that'll probably be the last bike you're going to want. Uh, Dan, you should go to, out to Orlando someday and do a ride with Blockhead. That's the crossover everybody didn't know they needed. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. I would love to go visit um, Bike and Bird down there in the Texas. And then I'd like to go visit uh, Blockhead and John Maxwell. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. And then Moto New Brighter out in the UK. That would be sweet. Uh, thanks, man. I don't know if you saw my chat earlier, but I said I can't afford to become a patron, but I will share and help support as much as I can if if I could afford Patreon. Yeah, don't, exactly. That that's the thing is like what you shared on or on uh, Facebook. I saw it. I mean, I see it, and that right there helps out. Um, so if you can't donate a dollar, you can't donate anything monetarily. It's it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Just you being in the chat. Uh, helps out the algorithm so other people can see it. You sharing uh, the live stream or you sharing a specific video that maybe talked to you is very important because that that right there will let somebody else know, hey, there's somebody out here doing this. Maybe uh, you know you can get some value out of that. So that's pretty cool. Thank you so much. I'm currently riding a Ninja 250 to get really familiar with riding. Any advice on an eventual upgrade? Uh, once again, if you like the platform, here's the cool thing about 
uh, Honda, like the Ninja and everything, or like the sport bikes, is that they're really good. The the manufacturers are like, all right, so we have the same platform basically from like a 250 all the way to a thousand. So you can go if you like the platform, if you like the feel of that bike, you can stick with the Ninja. Just get the 400. Get I think it's the 600. You can go. You just keep going up in CCs, CCs and different packages, and you're, you're good to go. If you want to try something different. Um, that's when you're going to need to do like a demo ride, a test ride, and all those things. Walter D. Castro, I have a question. Yamaha V-Start 250 or Harley Davidson Iron 883 uh, are okay first the ride. Um, so Yamaha 250 versus an Iron 883, two big jumps in uh, engine size and power. Uh, once again, both are okay to start on. If you start on the 883 just realize that it's got a lot more power it's less forgiving so if you start on a 250 it's gonna be more forgiving f of your mistakes so you're really gonna have to practice um you're really 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 gonna have to practice so i would take an i would take an msf course first because a lot of the times uh walter the class will have a 250 for you to start on it's either i don't think no not not a 150 it would be like a 250 to a 500 that you can start on and that's what they'll get you used to. So you can take that class for two days straight, riding out on the range. You're like, man, I like the two. I thought the 250 would be a lot of fun. I, I don't want the 250. I want the 883 now. So that will kind of help you make your decision for you. Um, or you could be like, man, I really love the 250. The 250 is a lot of fun. I want to get the V-Star 250. And there you go. So I would definitely take a class. Um, thanks, man. I do like the Ninja platform. Yeah, so that's the cool thing about that. That's the cool thing about the Ninja is that they have the, the 250, so you play around on that. And then you're like, I want to upgrade, but I really like the platform. It's like, all right, then just get a get a higher CC Ninja. And that way, you're already used to the uh, ergonomics. You're already used to, like, the controls. It might be a little bit different here and there because of different um, upgrades and everything. But you're going to like it. Uh, Detonator Agent, who do you think are braver, crazier, Supermoto stunt riders or super sport stunt riders? Um shoot braver i think supermoto stunt riders are crazier than super sport stunt riders but i think the super sport stunt riders are braver because i think you have to be a little crazy to go for a supermoto because you know you're going to want to get in trouble with that nobody buys a supermoto thinking oh i'm just going to commute to work no people buy supermotos to be to be dumb <laughs> um so I think they're crazier. And then if you're going to stunt a super sport or like a sport bike, that's more expensive. And they're not designed to be on their side. They're not designed to to, to be damaged. And fairings cost a lot. So they're, ah, shoot, maybe they are crazier. I don't know. Uh, XD Monkey, my son, but a 2013 Yamaha Raider with 2,100 miles of Cobra exhaust for 7K. Just wondering what you think. Um, as long as those two, uh, 2,100 miles are well kept and they're not like just been sitting there since 2013, then it should, that's, that's good. I mean, honestly, as long as you're happy with it, it's not about like who got the best deal or what. I mean, that's why I'm selling my bike for 5k. I'm sure I could sell it for more. Um, but at the end of the day, I got, I got the fun out of that bike. I want to pass it on to somebody else. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to give it away. I mean, that's not financially sound. <laughs> um but if you're having fun um and for 7k and you got that bike with a i mean the exhaust is just an exhaust um to me spend that extra cash on training um but yeah let's see let's see have you tried the yamaha bolt no um i like the look of it though i haven't i've sat on it and i just never rode one yet how to increase fuel efficiency on a 2002 Honda Shadow Ace. Uh, definitely make sure your tires are properly inflated. Make sure you're not gunning it off the start. And smooth throttle control really helps. Um, maybe do a, a tuning on your bike to see if uh, you're running too rich or too lean. Might want to try that out. Uh, do, 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 do. Get good gas also. Peprex Honda CB300, great bike, low seat height, decent power. Yeah, boy. That's right. That's good. That's good. So, guys, I'm going to be streaming for about two more minutes. Uh, I do an hour-long stream every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, I would love to get your guys' input on what you would like to hear next. 
Uh, so definitely swing on by the Discord or swing on by Patreon and let me know. And uh, see you later, Austin. See you later, man. Oh, we're about to end it. We're about to end it. Uh, I stream from 5 to 6 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Dan, could you do a video on things not to do on your motorcycle? Um, I have a video on not what to wear. So when you, when you mean things not to do, so you want me to tell you like not to take turns at a fast speed? I think it's a good one. Uh, it might work. That's pretty good. Or like not to worry about your chicken strips. Honestly, don't worry about those. Um, how about how about get a motorcycle insurance? I asked for AAA. There are no in all states. I need to get insurance where I can get insurance. Um, so go to Progressive if you want. Uh, I don't know where you're at. Uh, Progressive, you can get quotes. Uh, you can get a quote from Progressive, and then I think they do quotes. It's like a price check type thing. So uh, I'm going to be doing a video on that. I'm going to be doing a video on insurance pretty soon. Uh, reasons why you need it and when you need it. Uh, what's your favorite bike of all time? I don't know, man. I'm not a very big history buff when it comes to motorcycles. I kind of just stick with the small little niche of what I have. And right now, I'm going to tell you my Harley Sportster is my favorite bike of all time. It's pretty, it's pretty uneventful uh, <laughs> answer. But once I get the FTR, that probably will be it. Hey, Dan, I'm doing my EU motorcycle license exam next week. Wish me luck. Everyone wish Skyros M luck. Good luck, man. Good luck. Uh, I just want to say hi, authorized user. How you doing, man? I bought my first bike, 2018 Kawasaki Vulcan S Cafe. Sign up for MSF. Love your videos. They help a lot. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you want to get some practice in beforehand, uh, check out the playlist How to Ride a Motorcycle. Um, or you can check out the ddfmcrew.com. Um, I have it on my Patreon. It's it it's a uh, it's a great thing. Also, MotorcycleBeginnersGuide.com. But I'm glad that uh, you went out and you got an MSF class. That's very important, very important. Uh, Jose Rodriguez, what are my thoughts on the Harley Livewire? I think it's too expensive. I think uh, there's better things out there for the uh, an electric bike. Um, I did a video. I did a live stream on it actually, and I made fun of it like the whole time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, was it zero came out with a, a better looking electric bike that's half the price if not more than half the price or less than half the price of the live wire gets more range and has more power so I mean it's just it's ridiculous I think Harley screwed up on that one uh, can you do a how to ride as a passenger I, I have a video I have a few videos on how to ride as a passenger I just never been a passenger in a video um, but I do have a few, so if you want to look it up, um, I think it's just, I mean, you go on YouTube and put Dan Dan the Fireman Passenger, it's going to pop up. <laughs> Don't add tire shine to your tires. <laughs> uh, Brian Price, did I get my pants fixed? No, I did not. So if you look closely in today's video, you can actually see a little bit of orange. It's because I'm wearing orange underwear. <laughs> um, yeah, the FTR will become my favorite. All right, guys. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate everything. Thank you for the super chats. I really, guys, we have a new super chat leader for the month. Um, we got a bunch of new patrons earlier today. And just remember, for a dollar a month, you'll be supporting me, uh, the show, the channel. And once we hit 500 patrons, I'll be able to travel the country, come meet all of you, and hopefully get to coach you guys. That'd be fun. Spend a day just just learning some slow speed maneuvers in a parking lot learning how to properly brake how to how to maneuver your bike the way you want to maneuver it i think it'd be a lot of fun and if you would like to support that message please swing on by patreon.com slash dan fireman and then on top of that we do this spotify so spotify is an easy way to digest these live streams with that said i hope you guys ride safe and be safe and i'll see you later